You're watching Cybersecurity Inside, a video cast where you can discover what you need to know about cybersecurity. Here are your hosts, Tom Garrison and Camille Moorhart. Our guest today is Chris Apgar. He is CEO and president at Apgar & Associates. He's a certified information system security professional and certified chief information security officer. So welcome to the podcast, Chris. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. In the preparation for today, we, we, we met briefly and you talked about the other part of your role, which, which is in the chief information security officer space and that you, you can act and do act as a CISO for multiple companies or smaller companies that can't themselves justify having maybe a dedicated person. Can you talk a little bit more about how that works and, and what type of company is it that's, that, that needs your services in that space? It ranges in size. I've got one client who's, there are 22 people. They're a, a software development company out of Boston. And they're really pretty easy to work with. And they basically, in their case, you know, when I'm acting as the chief information security officer, it's more of a, you know, they come to me because they have a, a question that they can't answer. Not as much from the, what I would call the strategic planning perspective. I have some, a couple of larger companies that I work with where that's basically my role is I'm more the strategic guy who comes in and says, okay, let's look at the roadmap. Let's see what you've got. Let's talk about where you need to go. And then let's map it out and see what we need to do over the next one, two, three years so that we can increase what you're able to detect, increase what you're able to block, improve your security stance. And, and it's, it's one of those that, that from in those particular situations, the CISO acts in, in a more of a strategic perspective and looking at it from, okay, what does the business need? What are the business requirements? Because I can't come in and say, well, you need to do security because security is a good thing and it'll protect you. I've got to be able to explain how does that fit in with the, the strategy of the business. There is no such thing as risk-free security. So I need to, to look at it in terms of what is going to be the best way to address your needs as you move forward. And I mentioned the positioning in the marketplace. Well, how am I going to better position myself in the marketplace and at the same time reduce my risk from, from attack, from, from data loss, from things like that? Obviously, your focus is mostly in healthcare. Do you have peers that, that do the same kind of sort of CISO for smaller businesses by vertical? Is that is that a thing? It is in a lot of respects. I've got one uh, who's a colleague of mine. His background is he's been worked as a CISO for uh, some very large corporations, including national banks. And right now he's he said he said he's got more work than he knows to, what to do with. And he is more across the board. So he would work with finance. He would work in healthcare. There are other companies that, by their very nature, one that I know of is they work as, with providing executive level CISO talent as well as chief information officer talent to organizations. And it's not just a particular sector. It could be government, it could be finance, it could be manufacturing. And then you go all the way down to smaller organizations where there are, are entities that have as part of their team or their workforce is they have virtual chief information security officers who work with smaller organizations, like maybe a law firm or a, a large healthcare practice or something like that. Do you see a, a difference or a pretty big difference in the threat models for smaller companies versus larger companies? Yes. There are some that are just the same. I mean, ransomware is going to hit you. It doesn't matter what your size are because, you know, with ransomware, say I hit a small organization and I say, well, you got to pay me $5,000 in Bitcoins. Well, if I hit 40 small organizations and I got a lot of money. And then on the other side of the equation, you have things like have happened with the oil refinery. You've had it happen with hospitals. You've had it happen with, with other large organizations. And those are, you have both the, what I would call the cyber criminals who are out to make money. You have also on the other side, you have nation states like Korea, like Russia, that are out there for their own purposes, trying to disrupt things. So you've got it on in you know, on a different and different places at different calibers. Smaller organizations, if I were to say, you know, what do they need to do? They're a lot simpler profile because you know I could have a, a small company. I'll I'll take mine as an example. We're a small company. 
we don't have any servers. All of our assets are in the cloud. We don't have a lot of exposure. So I'm not going to go out and spend $100,000 on the, the best firewall and security incident and event management solution that'll monitor everything versus somebody like a an Intel, for that matter. Intel is going to spend a, a good chunk of money to make sure that they're they're protecting their assets. If you are a small business, what are maybe what are some of these other resources that that they may have at their disposal regarding security or other things that you've come across? One of the things that's that's relatively common in smaller organizations is they'll contract with a managed services provider. So they they're they're contracting with a company that will basically you get a new laptop in, they'll they'll put the right image on it so that people can't do what the, they can't install just about anything they want on it. They'll provision it. They'll um, at the end of the, the life, they'll destroy the data on it so it doesn't get out there. They'll do the ongoing network support, manage the firewall, manage the email servers and things like that on behalf of smaller organizations. Another part, uh, another org type of organization you see out there, and these work with small to, to sometimes medium to large companies are the managed security service providers or what some people call an outsourced SOC or security operations center, where what they do is they basically, they provide the 24 seven coverage to monitor the network to make sure somebody's not attacking you. And if they are, they do something about it. They, they, so that's that 24 hour, 24 seven coverage where organizations that don't have something like that, you think about it, if I'm a large organization, I may be able to afford it. And I'll look at a client of mine, they're a 2000 person organization. They're a hundred million dollar a year company. They don't want to spend the money to try to find what can be high priced resources to manage a security operations center 24 seven around the globe because they're, they are an international company. What they're gonna do is go to a managed services provider, managed security services provider, which is what they did. And that managed security services provider, they give them 24 seven coverage. And the, the other thing is if I'm, whether a small or medium sized business, that kind of talent's expensive. And I don't have that talent inside my organization. So if I only need 10 hours of that a week or a month, it's far more economical for me to go buy that service. And, and I'm also buying a service where I know these, these people, they're experts in it. That's what they do for a living is all day long. They're, they're the security people. How about government? I mean, are there, are there resources? I'm thinking for small and maybe medium businesses that don't have those experts that you're describing, maybe don't really know where to reach out to? Are there government resources? If you look on the web for US CERT, C-E-R-T, what they offer is they offer resources. They have they have cybersecurity experts like in, in Oregon, there is a cybersecurity expert who's one of two in the in region 10, which is the Northwest. And she acts as that person who small businesses can go to and ask those questions and say, okay, I have this problem or I need to um What's the best way to protect my organization? The other thing they offer is they offer things like free service around. They will do a phishing campaign for you. So they'll send bogus emails and they'll let you know how many of your employees clicked on it. They'll do an external penetration test for free. They'll do vulnerability scans for free. So there are things that the federal government will do for free for organizations. And, and they are, you know, I know my friend is the, who's the cybersecurity advisor for Oregon. She, she, she said, send me as many people as you can, because we really, really, really want to help people. And they have the, they have the resources to do that. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks for joining us for Cybersecurity Inside. You can follow us here on YouTube or wherever you get your audio podcasts. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guests and author and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Intel Corporation.